is it going happy peeps it's your boy dvd i know you guys haven't seen or heard anything from me in a while i've been trying to digest a lot so that's why i got my page here got a lot of talking points we got a cover it's been what a month a lot has happened in that month the reason why i haven't been uploading quite a few stuff has been busy man been quite busy as well but i'll try to keep you guys posted i'm actually working on something as a New Year's Day special for when Arsenal play Manchester United, trying to get some Manchester United fans in, make it a bit exciting because I'm sure you guys are all tired of my rambling on and on. So yeah, first and foremost, uh, happy festive season to all of you. Thank you for the love and support. Stay safe out there. And this is usually my favorite time of the year. Look, I always said I'm not really a Christmas person, but my Boxing Day and the 28th, that old buzz before the prem. New Year's Day, that's my time. So, let me not waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So, last time I had a massive rant. The last video I posted, usually what I like to do is a lot of people want the rant, but I don't want to make it all boring for you guys because sometimes I even get tired of hearing myself and more or less I basically sound like I'm repeating myself all the time. So, I prefer to do it more in a more calm state of and frame of mind like I am now. So, anyway, where were we? The last game, we, I think we lost to Leicester. That was last where we left off at what caused my end as well. Nothing changed since then, basically. When I had Emery still at the helm, a lot of people thought, I thought for one, that usually we're going into the international break, that was the time for him to get the sack. But with our board having a lack of balls, as they've shown recently, they let that continue. Then we come up against Frankfurt, and this was what usually stands out, and this is a key point for me, people, is the fact that what got Wenger fired in the first place as well was empty seats in the stadium. I mean, it was all for clear and everyone for everyone to see. I've never seen the Emirates that empty. It was just a dull affair. It was boring. It was drab. It was the same old cut crap football, Aya football that I keep seeing. It's like these players smoked three splits before the game. And we took the lead. And then we ended up losing the game 2-1, and of course you can imagine the booze ringing out as well, so... Anyway, that was that. Luckily, the next morning, I'm sitting at home, I see my phone blowing up, going off, and Una Emery has been sacked. Wow. Massive news, but not doesn't come much as a surprise. My main issue again with it is, like I said again, why did it take so long for this man to get the sack? He should have gone... Long ago, because even after the international break, we were shit against Southampton as well, and Southampton could have battered us. In fact, the fact that, like I said, didn't even celebrate this equalizing goal in the last minute tells you everything that you needed to know. We had lost the dressing room. So, anyway, Freddy came in, Freddy took over. Um, look, I'm not going to get too much on Freddy's back. Freddy's one of my all time favorites, so, and the proper mess that we are in right now, I don't expect much from him. We come up against Norwich, we draw 2 2. One thing I must say, is that we showed fight in that game, like I said to everybody else. The positive of that game is that I can take out of it, even though we were still conceding shit goals, sloppy goals, Mustafi doing his usual, Bambi on ice, turning his back, David Luiz. Ah, what do you expect? I'm used to it now already. But one thing I must say, if I have to give a positive, that's a game on another day under Emery, we could have lost. Make sure 11 played, we had 11, I felt a bit perplexed when I saw that 11 anyway. You take the point away from him, even though Norwich are, I mean, really, we should be beating Norwich. But anyway, the mess that we're in, the allocation form we have been showing as of late, we can't really be too expecting much as well. We come up against Brighton. Now, you would think this is a home game for us against Brighton. The fans would be up for it. And in fact, Graham Potter's team literally play us off the park. Bear in mind, in Brighton's last 16 games against the top six, They've only not stopped four points. I give you one guess who those four points are against. You guess that I pop your cherry FC. Pop your cherry FC. If you're a virgin, just come to, to Arsenal and they'll sort you out. They'll break that virginity for you easily. But we moved on and we went to West Ham. Now, I must admit, this was the lineup before the game started. This was the lineup I wanted to see. I can't, couldn't fault anything really in. Um, Freddy's selection, the team at Bellerin in, um, Kieran Tierney as well. And there was what? There was Torreira sitting at the base, Xhaka as well next to him. Now, I'm not Xhaka's biggest fan, I'm his biggest critic as well. I've always been his biggest critic. One thing I must say, 
since he has come back into the squad, he has, uh, doesn't, hasn't done too badly. And let's be honest, in our 22 game run last year when Xhaka and Torreira were at the place, that was part of the reason as to why, because there was some stability in that front. He changed the front three, he dropped Laka to the bench, he kept Ozil in and he brought in Martinelli. Uh, played Oba through the middle and Pepe out wide, which for me personally, if there was one positive spark against Brighton, it was when Pepe came on because that allowed Hector to overlap. So we go behind 1-0 and you're thinking, oh shit, same old bullshit. And to be honest, that for me, that first half was diabolical. It was atrocious, it was shocking, it was disgusting. I was left disgusting. I'm thinking, same old shit, different day. We come out uh, and to top it all off before the game or so, Hector Bellerin got an injury, so Enzo Metanaz had to come in the bird catcher. Midway through the first half, Kieran Tierney dislocates his shoulder and now Kolasnik has to come on. Anyway, second half begins. Kolasnik gets the ball at White Martinelli equalizer, and that you could sense was the turning point because as shit as we stem off, I don't think we were in that game until that goal. And I have to admit, I, I like Martinelli. If there's one, he's one of the few positive sparks besides Bursal, Burnt, Leno, and Aubameyang that I can pick out in this team. He's got the fight, the hunger, the drive, the passion. I just, I just love the kid. For 18, he's got a bright future ahead of him, but I don't want to gas him up too much. But what I will say is I like his mentality. He scored the goal, grabbed the ball, did not be in mind. He scored in his Premier League debut, you know, in his Premier League debut, which is the goal he got against West Ham. He scored in his Carabao Cup debut, he scored in his Europa League debut. Now, you've just got an equalizer away from home on your Premier League debut. He grabs the ball. A few years ago, Giroud scored a scorpion kick, and then a week later, we played the old or I think in the week on Wednesday we played against Bournemouth, we were 3-0 down, we could, he scored the equalizer to make a 3-3, we could have still got the winner and he fucking went around dancing and jumping around like a fucking mosquito there when we could have won the game. Look at the difference in mentality. This kid went, got the ball, and there we went on, and Pepe, wow, what can I say? Ozil started becoming a factor, Ozil placed the ball into Pepe, and what I must say is, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Pepe's been trying that bending shot the whole season. It's just not coming off. He tried one against Liverpool, I remember. He hit one on the Emirates a couple of times and just went right. This time it came off and you could see the relief and what it meant for Pepe as well. Then Aubameyang got the winner, Pepe assist, and that was it. Happy days, everyone is arguing and shit and whatever. It's a good, it was, felt like a relief. I was a relief man on Monday night because I couldn't see it. I was already thinking moments of relegation at this point as well because if we had to lose, I would have been in the bottom off. But I'm not discounting us being in the relegation zone after December, which is why I felt we need to get our shit together. Anyway, we moved on to Standard Liège in the week. And lo and behold, Laurel and Hardy, the freaks, the clowns, the comedians. Socrates and David Luiz are playing and you can already imagine what happens. We 2 nil down, but... Martinelli came on again and I didn't think we were going to win. In fact, I was already preparing to end second in the group. I was already preparing for the dropouts of the Champions League with the Ajax, or Inter Milan or even the Salzburg. Look, I know Salzburg are about to lose Minamina as well as Inga, that Haaland kid who's bashing it up in the Champions League. But still, you don't want to get, being second in your group, you don't want to get one of the big boys. You want a favourable tie as well. But Martinelli comes on, sets up Saka, and at least 2-2, we take that as well. Of course, we're out of our Victoria's Secret FC, but I'll take top of the group as well. Anyway, positives, I must admit, we are showing fight. Martinelli, Pepe, I think the added balance on the wing is what we've needed for a while. Also, Luca Lavlaka is one of my favorite players in the team as well. But I think it's time, I think it's better if you have Laka coming off from the bench, giving us that option, a plan B, basically, like City do with Aguero and Jesus to bring him on. It's a good problem to have as well. And I think Martinelli and Pepe on the wings, that's place with Aubameyang through the middle. Because Aubameyang, I know he is a winger, he was a winger at um, Dortmund, but he's a goal scorer, so you have to play him through the middle. I think Torreira being played at the base, I must admit, I've been wanting him to play there for a while now. And I think Freddy has brought that in, and it's working and to a certain extent. Um, I just hope he stays there at the base, and I heard rumors of him leaving to Napoli, hope it doesn't come to fruition because for the last part of the season, last year, we thought this was the guy that we've been asking for, this was a defensive midfielder we were crying so I'll keep faith with him. I must admit, Ozil is another positive because in the second half of the game, you could see when Ozil was on the pitch and started getting 
more involved in the game, we started looking fluid. So I would keep that as well going into Sunday. Uh, negatives. Ha. Tierney and Bellerin out. Excuse me, people. I don't mean on too much. I know, I know it's a bit changed from the beer. Cole is in here, but Cole will be here soon and you'll see the beer as well. So it's Cole, clean Cole. <laughs> anyway, Tierney and Bellerin out. I think I will allow. that is going to be a massive miss for us. I heard rumors of Tierney being out for three months. That is a massive blow because I like Tierney actually. I thought he was he's good to have on the wing. So Kolasinac becomes vital as well. Although, give credit to Kolasinac when he did come on against West Ham. He did get the assist and he did look rather solid. In fact, he's been looking improved under, under Freddy as well. Bellerin out as well. I don't know how long. I don't know. Maybe it's the injury still killing him. Uh, negative, Luis Socrates partnership. I don't want to see these two. Socrates I can handle because I think Socrates and Chambers, when they have played together, away from home against Newcastle, we won the game 1-0 no, against away from home against West Ham. Socrates and Chambers, we won the game, so we got him looking all over the place. I think with Louise, it's just a nut job. He's just fucking crazy. He's all over the place. Um, too much space and no discipline in midfield. The issue, as you can see, against Brighton. The whole game against Brighton for me, it was it was shambolic. Every time Brighton went forward, they looked like they could score. We were so open, it was like a prostitute's vagina on payday. We were all over the place. It was open. There was no balance. And I was crying out, just sit, stay in your position. Stay seated. Just sit in your position. All the space. There's so much space between midfield and defense. The same with the first half against West Ham. We were all over the place. Noble was running a mop. There was no discipline. Torreira is too far from Xhaka, and Xhaka is as slow as a truck, so he can't cover the ground as well. Standard Liège again yesterday, it doesn't matter who comes in the thing, so I think Freddy needs to sort that out. But the bigger question is, who, who could be the next coach? Now, there's been a lot of names flying around. In fact, I heard something like we've got like a shortlist of like 14 candidates. Gee, what's the less I say about that, the better, it's only going to make me mad. Well, there's a couple of names thrown in the app, so I'll touch on the big ones. I heard rumors of Arteta and Vieira. Now, don't get me wrong, I hear a lot of good things about Arteta. I'm sure he'll be a great coach one day, but he's a total no-no for me. The same with Vieira as well, basically just for inexperience. They're both inexperienced as well. I think you only have to look at Freddy Lundberg to see that sometimes he really does look out of his depth as well. And uh, can you imagine, look at, look at our team. Our team is a bunch of sport brats as well. Let's let's make no mistake about it. They are as comfortable as ever. Vieira, I would rather bring in as a number two. And uh, a big manager, of course, because we're going to need somebody to steady our ship. But for me, uh, one, if you come to me with Arteta and Vieira, I'm not going to listen to you. The one team in France is laying 15th in the league. And the other one, Pat, Pat Cones for Pep. So, simple and plain, no. I don't want no one that packs the cones correct on training for Pep. And that's it, we move on. Allegri, Ancelotti, Simeone, Poch and Rafa. Those are my four. Of course, with Allegri being my number one for Simeone, tied with Simeone, very close with. Um, reason being, they will focus on the defence. They will get us sorted on the defence. I believe that you cannot win any big trophies with a solid defence. You only have to look at the last couple of winners in the Premier League. Goals win your games, defense wins your titles. Simple and plain. We need somebody to sort ourselves out. Why I say Ancelotti? You see, he speaks for himself. It's simple and plain. The man's a winner. Look what he's done with Chelsea as well. He's won the Premier League. I know there is a language barrier, of course, but you can get the translator to sort that out if you are serious about it. Um, and again, like I said, he comes, okay, he will demand things. He will immediately demand respect. Simeone, we all know he doesn't take shit from anybody. Poch, I'd love. Simply just because I know he's a manager bringing fresh new ideas into the thing, but I doubt he will come. I'd love him coming simply just because it would wound Tottenham up there down the road, so that would be nice. Rafa, I like Rafa. You can say whatever you want, but the man knows the Premier League, he knows his stuff, he's a master tactician, and he will sort out our defence. My main thing is, here's where it comes in. I don't want any coach to come in that has affiliation and loyalty to these players. These players have already shown that they can tools down at any time. What irritated me the most after Una Emery left is the fact that you've seen um, Twitter posts here from this one. We're sorry, boss. We're sorry we let you down. Sorry we didn't work out. You are part of the fucking problem. You are part of the reason why he left. 
And that's why I'm totally against Arteta coming in because Arteta played with Chambers while he was at Arsenal. He played with Ozil, he played with Bellerin. I want someone that's got no affiliation, no loyalty to the spoiled brat bunch of players as well. That is what I want. Initially, I would have liked Brendan Rodgers to come in. But as you know, Arsenal dilly dally over coaches like they did when um, Wenger was in the job. They let Wenger stay for too long. And what happened? We must start off Klopp and Pep. Now, sorry people. People say, people like to call Arsenal a big club. We are a big club. Well, if you're a big club, pop your chest up and go pay the money. I know Brendan Rodgers just signed a new bumper deal, but why the fuck did we then move from Ivory to the Emirates? Did, you, did we sell our soul for nothing? So that's my take on it. Act like a big club. Puff your chest out. Even irrespective of what they want, don't tell me there's only this candidates available. If we are the Arsenal like we say we are, go to a team, go to a club and say, I want this manager. How much is his contract? Here you go. There's your money. Simple and plain. I would have liked Brendan Rodgers, but I have to be realistic. I cannot see Arsenal going for him. Right now, seeing that he has already signed that bumper deal until 2024, you only have to look at how Liverpool are moving as well. They Liverpool sign Klopp until 2024. Happy days. That's how big clubs move. They don't waste time. Simple and plain. The other dilemma that we are sitting with is, I understand that we want to get the right man in for the job. But the other dilemma that we are sitting with is, do you keep Freddy until January? You could keep Freddy until January. But then what happens is you employ the new manager. The new manager comes in. The players that Freddy might have signed in January doesn't work out. And then you have to build a re rebuild again. I wouldn't also be against a caretaker coach just for somebody to steady our ship because our ship needs steadying for now. Just um, like Chelsea did with Bruce Hedding, I think that's a good option. Even if we know we're going to get the big man, if we know, I know Allegri said he does want to get involved now with football, he's still enjoying his sabbatical. Simeone, I heard murmurs of him possibly getting the sack at Atletico Madrid. If you can maybe hold out for them, and you can guarantee me you're going to get them next season building on with Saliba coming back from his loan spell. Then by all means get a caretaker just to come in and steady the ship because we are a bunch of small brats. I remember when I was in school as well, we were uncontrollable. We were in grade 9, we were notorious for being hooligans in the class. We even got one of our teachers, a young teacher couldn't take it anymore. She left and then what happened? Our principal Mr. Paulson came in and steady the ship. We were shit scared of Mr. Paulson. We were, and then we went on quite fine until the next man came in. This is what needs to happen with Arsenal. Maybe we need a Mr. Pulse figure as well. <coughs> now, let's move on to the big game, Manchester City on Sunday. I don't want to keep you guys for too long, and I don't want to ramble on for too long. And it's going to be a difficult game. They are Manchester City. They've battered us on the last four times as well, but I think if there's any better time to play Manchester City, it is now as well. I know they've come back from a defeat as well to Manchester United, but we all know how Pep's team to go. Once they've picked up a knock, they come back and they smash the next team as well. Where I do think we can win it is Fernandinho being in defence. Look, he is a brilliant player, but I think with him being out of the midfield and not able to win, and win the ball so high up the field in midfield as well, because you look at when Fernandinho wins the ball, he's so crucial to Manchester City in midfield. He presses, he presses, he presses the players. And with us doing our playing up in the back bullshit as well, it's, we can count ourselves lucky that Fernandinho isn't there to eat us up because then City will eat us alive as well. So I think with Fernandinho being at centre-back, that could take them much out of their midfield as well. But I mean, you only have to look at our midfield. So it's going to take a lot. We're going to have to be disciplined in midfield. Counter-attack with speed is where I think we can win the game. However, we are not a team to sit back like United did. I think United showed exactly how to counter-attack Man Manchester City when they went to the Etihad. However, we don't have a one Bissaka in our team. We don't have maybe a Lindelof or Maguire that can sit in there and, and defend for their lives or whatever. So it's going to be difficult. If you want to go the counter-attacking route, we're going to have to be disciplined in defence and midfield and keep our shape. The other option is go for the throats. Attack is the best form of defence. So let's see. We've got the players. I hope Martinelli starts. He has got to start. I'd go with the same team as well that played against West Ham and keep it going. Like they say, why fix something that that's not broken? Because the fact is, fact of the matter is this. If Freddy decides to bring in David Luiz now, then I can guarantee you we're going to get time for six. We might as well go fetch half a dozen eggs at the shop because we're going to get smashed in that case. Where we can beat City is they are on the ropes. They are on the ropes, Pep is under pressure as well. So this is a massive game for us with Wolves playing Tottenham 
with Manchester United playing Everton, not saying that United aren't going to draw the game or lose the game, but with Everton getting dunked and Ferguson in, this is a big weekend for us. We're going to have to get our shit together. The last couple of games were winnable games for us, but we fucked it up. So now we've got to go, we got to go through this tough spell now. We've got City, we've got Bournemouth, we've got Everton away, we've got Chelsea and we've got Manchester United. So we made our bet, we've got to lay in it as well. But let's see what happens. I think City are miles and miles ahead of us already. Let me go to the lineup I would go with. Uncle Bert in goal. It's a no-brainer. He's one of our best players this season. On the right, I'd go with Ainsley Matthew Niles. Through the middle, I would... If holding his foot, I would go with holding, although I don't think... I don't think maybe this might be the game. So I think he would, he would stick with um, Socrates and Chambers. We have to go with Kolasinac on the left. I'd stick with Torreira and Xhaka, with Ozil just in front of them. And of course, I'd go with Pepe, Martinelli on the wings with Oba through the middle. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a mad thing. Let's see what happens and let's see how we go. I'm going to be honest. I think the best we can get out of this game is a draw, simply just because it's Manchester City. They have beaten us lots of times. They're the one team that come to the Emirates and have a fucking party with us. So... Let's see where we go, people. I'll try, like I said again, I'll try to bring you more content as we come out. Thanks for the likes, thanks for the sharing and all of that, for the love you guys have given me. It is the seventh weekend this weekend, so I'll be a bit smashed. The same on Sunday after the game, Monday, I'll be a bit smashed. So I'm trying to bring a video with Cole for you guys next week just to round up everything what we've seen so far. But anyway, thanks a lot, guys. It's your boy, David E, and I'm out of here.